Let's talk teaching new players magic. What is going on everybody? Welcome to today's top five tips videos. Today we are talking about teaching new players magic. Obviously this is something we all try and do uh, and sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. Hopefully this kind of video and these kinds of tips that we're going to be talking about today are going to improve that success rate a little bit, make things a little bit easier for not only yourself, but also the person learning the game. I think it's really crucial to keep things very simple, keep things very interesting for people. And so these five tips are really going to be the starting point for you and hopefully give you some some guides and things to do uh, as, as you teach a new player the game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, number one on our list of tips for teaching a new player magic is to frame it as just another game. Uh, I think it's really easy to get caught up as a player who's, uh, you know, been playing for years and years. Obviously, this feels like a very complicated but a, a really special game, and there's a lot to it. There's a lot of awesome stuff, but all of that means it can be really intimidating for a new player. And for that, that's not really the best thing you want. So uh, for me, I have found it's been very successful just saying, you know what, this is just like another game. It makes it relatable. It makes it really easy for someone to say, oh, okay, well, I understand that. I've played other card games before played other board games before, you read the instructions just like in any other game, and you get those foundational pieces down, and then the rest of the, the learning process becomes so much easier. I think it's really difficult to make that relatable sometimes, and framing it as just a game is a really great starting point, just to make things not seem quite so daunting. I think and Magic is inherently a little bit more complicated than a lot of games, and definitely more nerdy than a lot of games, and that's okay, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but sometimes those can be barriers for entry for people. And so anything you can do to kind of break those barriers down and make it a little more easy uh, is, is going to help your process and going to help that new player really understand just the fundamentals of the game. Tip number two is honestly probably one of the biggest ones. It's just to keep things simple. Keep things as simple as possible, and that goes for card choices, that goes for deck choices, that goes for every step of the way. You want to make sure that everything you are teaching is very simple, very straightforward, and that way, again, those fundamentals can get, can kind of get into place uh, for them to expand on that knowledge on their own. So some, some tips here in particular, don't use overcomplicated cards. Uh, core sets are a really great place to start for teaching somebody magic, and part of the reason being, and some people know this, some people don't, I feel like most people should, but uh, for, for abilities like keyword abilities like lifelink or menace or death touch or anything like that, uh, core sets are really good about putting that italicized text right next to it that says exactly what that ability does. It also doesn't introduce any one-off mechanics, things like haunt and uh, just random one-off abilities that we see in things like Guilds of Ravnica where there's tons of abilities for every single guild. You don't need to worry about any of that. Don't, f don't, don't focus on those kinds of abilities, focus on the fundamental evergreen keyword abilities as they are called, and make sure you're playing with those core set cards where they can see exactly what those things mean. I think generally as you go through the game what you will find is that a new player is going to sit there and need to read the card every single time, and it may take you know, three or four times before they truly remember, oh, okay, lifelink means whenever this creature deals damage, I gain that much life. It's a really basic concept for a lot of us, but for a new player, it is not. They have never seen that before. And so having that reminder text there to help them understand is a really great starting point. I think in addition, make sure that your starting decks that you create for someone they're all um, just monocolored lists. I think what I have found really, really helpful is I create like a 40 card deck. That way, again, not overcomplicating, just not a 60 card deck. Keep it down to 40. Make sure they're monocolored. And that way you can, on the onset, just explain, you know, each color is a little bit different. This is what they're good at. This is what they're not good at. And then allow them to make that decision. I think the, the tendency is to say, well, yeah, I really just, you're going to start in red. Red's easy. Red's very easy. White's very easy. Green, a little more complicated. And then blue and black tend to be on the more complicated end as well. I think a lot of people kind of make that decision for someone to say, you're going to play red and that's how it's going to go and that's it. I think that can work, but I think to gauge interest, you should allow them to at least understand what each color does in very, very fundamental and very, very simple terms. Keep things easy. You don't need to overcomplicate that. Keep things monocolored, keep things in a core set, and try and establish that fundamental information before you get further in and delve deeper into you know, what each color can do uh, and, and what they're best at. 
Number three is pretty crucial as well, and this is to stick with your deck. Uh, I think really crucially, you don't want to be switching up the uh, the new player's deck list too much. You don't. I, I think it's easy as a as a veteran player to kind of get overexcited and say, "Okay, you've you've played white. Let's let's try red now, or let's try green." That way, you you know you're thinking in your head, "It'd be awesome if they understood. I think they'd really be good in green, but they've been playing white or whatever." And you get really overexcited. I think that's kind of the wrong way to think about it. I think you can do that, but. I think you need to establish that fundamental information first and sticking them with their color establishes really fundamental pieces of just general turn structure. I mean, you look through the phases of a turn, you've got your upkeep phase, you've got your draw, your untap, you've got your uh, main phase, your combat phase, second main phase, and then end step. All of that is just very crucial information that regardless of the deck you're playing, you have to know to be able to truly enjoy the game and understand the game. Uh, and so that's what you're trying to establish up front. So keeping the deck as, as similar as possible or just leaving them with the same deck for quite a while until they've gotten some of that fundamental information down is really the best thing you can do because that way they're not worried about reading every single card after game five. They understand that deck. They know what they're looking at. And so that way they don't have to focus as heavily on that. Uh, I have found most importantly things like combat, uh, the stack, uh, and just turn structure in general are like the hardest pieces to, to truly teach somebody. Uh, turn structure may be a little bit easier than combat and the stack, but um, hopefully you can keep things very, very simple and kind of get them through that. I think you can really do a lot if you keep them with that same deck and that way they're not, you know, just trying to read every card while trying to think of their turn structure, while trying to think, okay, what do I do during combat? Don't worry about that. Let them get used to it first, then establish those pieces, and then hopefully once they've learned that, we can move on to step four. All right, step four really takes place once you have already kind of established that fundamental information that we've talked about in step three, and this is to introduce very minute and very small changes. Now, that could be very small things like just a couple of upgrades to the same deck that they've already been playing. That might be swapping out their, their normal win con with a planeswalker or their normal win con with you know, one or two different ones, and that way they can start to see the difference between the two cards and maybe what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, that kind of thing. But start by upgrading just a few cards at a time. Uh, play a few games, talk with them about that game, or, or those few games, and make sure that they're understanding why you've made those upgrades. I think that's a really crucial step, is to just take a step back, stop playing, and understand why you did what you did, and, and truly understand why those cards make the deck better or if they didn't, why didn't they? Uh, and let them talk through that a little bit. Kind of bait them into it, you know? Get the get those questions rolling. Say, okay, now how did you feel when you were able to play that kind of card? Did that seem stronger to you or did that really kind of hinder your gameplay later on? And be able to talk with them about that. I think that's really important. Uh, once you have kind of upgraded that deck and once they've gotten used to it and they're starting to kind of not have to read every single card and that kind of thing, uh, then try and maybe push them into a different, very simple, go back to that simple core set style uh, deck and, and give them a different color that they haven't played yet and let them kind of work through the different colors. That can take some time, but I think it's again crucial. That's that second level of fundamental information where it's just understanding the strengths and the weaknesses of each color. And while you can explain that all day, they're not gonna remember it. They've got too much information to think about. Uh, and so experiencing it firsthand is a really good way uh, for them to just truly get, oh, okay, this is what's going on. This is why I might want to play green. This is my, why I might want to throw a second color into my deck later on once I've had the experience and can understand each strength and weakness of each color. Uh, so again, keep those upgrades and those, those changes very small and minute as you go through, but that's a great way to kind of delve them further into it once that fundamental information is established. They can really push through and start to really start, start enjoying the game. Uh, I think that's the most crucial thing is that they enjoy it. If they don't, they're never going to want to learn, and so they're never really going to delve deep into it. I think this, that's a really strong and effective way of saying, oh, I can do this really cool thing. Uh, maybe I need to throw in a couple new cards and that kind of stuff. It gets them really excited about the, uh, the game as a whole. All right, and the last tip on the list is actually for you, the person teaching them, and that is just be patient. Be as patient as you possibly can. I understand I have taught enough people to know that it can be a very frustrating process and a very long process to teach someone how to truly play. 
Uh, but this really is the most important thing to remember. New players, they're going to want to read every card. They're going to want to read multiple cards. Uh, they're going to want to read the same card multiple times. You'll have to explain things multiple times, but that's just part of it. Uh, I think that's all part of just understanding the game, understanding what everything does. We were all there at one time, so try and put yourself back in their shoes and understand that, okay, no, it's fine that they're having to read the same card over and over. Don't get frustrated, don't get, don't get impatient, just let them do their thing and walk them through it as best, you're, as best you can. You're there to facilitate and teach, not, you know, discourage or anything like that. Uh, also, just a quick tip in, in, inside of this be patient, don't be uh, overloading, don't try and do everything in one sitting, don't try and, you know, really push it and just one thing after another. Sit down for a day, explain the different colors very briefly, allow them to choose a deck, and then just start with a game. Maybe the turn structure is the focus of that first game, just making sure that they understand, okay, at the beginning of your turn, you're going to draw that card. That's when, after that, you're going to be in your main phase. That's when you can play your land, you can play some of your spells if you'd like. We got combat, we got that second main phase. If you want to play any other spells, you certainly can. And then we end the turn and then it, it comes back to me. And then that way they are understanding one piece of the puzzle that hopefully as a larger whole they can start to piece together themselves and you're just there to start facilitating. There will be that click moment where somebody really starts to understand and grasp some piece of the puzzle. And that's when you really know, oh, okay, it's working. It's going to happen. They're going to enjoy the game. I know it. And that's a really awesome moment. That's something we all look forward to because, I mean, truly, even now when you start a new deck as a veteran player, you, you play a new deck, maybe it's a combo deck for the first time. And my goodness, that first time it works, it just is like, oh, that that's that feeling you want to inspire in somebody else and you want to do that in the most simple and fundamental way possible and i think as a whole these tips kind of help you do that but most importantly just be patient let them work through it let them get there themselves that is truly just the most helpful advice i could ever give anybody uh, make sure you are patient throughout the entire process all right, guys, that is going to do it for my top five tips. Again, this, these lists are fairly subjective, but I do think that uh, everything on this list is really helpful for teaching a new player. If you do have a friend or a family member or cause I, whoever that wants to learn the game, at least check these tips out. I think there are plenty of other resources of ways you can do that. There are even deck lists out there that you can kind of rip off and say, hey, this is what I want to do uh, to keep things really simple. I think you need to kind of do your research and make sure you're doing things right. Uh, and hopefully this little guide helped you do that. But I certainly do wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, let me know, just out of curiosity, have you ever brought somebody new to the game and uh, maybe tell me about your experience with like, as, as you learn the game, did somebody teach you or did you learn it on your own? How did that go for you? I'd love to know just out of curiosity. And let me do, now, know down below if you agree with these tips. If you've got any other ones that you'd like to share for other people, please make sure to leave them down there as well. But thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I will see you in the next MTG Tips video.